Hi, I'm Vampy and today I'm going to talk to you about the electric eel wheel comb winder. First we'll just go over the contents of the box. The main body of the comb winder is here and we'll look at that a bit more closely later. Then you will have a uh, power brick. With the power brick you have a uh, cable like this that has a North American plug on it. If you don't live in North America you can either get an adapter that attaches to here or a cable with a two pin plug like this that plugs into your own country's mains. Then we have this foot switch, a very very long link cable, the tension unit, a couple of elastic bands and an additional optional tensioner a clamp for the tension unit, various cones, the manual and a template that shows you how to position your comb winder when it's set up. Now let's look a little bit more closely at the comb winder unit itself. So this main bit here is the drum, that's what winds the yarn onto your cone. This part here is the cone arm and it has a little uh, notch there that you can put your thumb in to smoothly open. This part here is a key and you take it out of one slot and put it into the one next to it and that holds the arm up in place for you to be able to change the cone. Change the cone you uh, move the cone holder out and that looks like this and you take a cone and slide it on to the holder. Put the holder back into these bits of the arms and uh, it gets held in place with magnets and I can take out the key and that slides back into place. Some more controls here on the bottom you have the on off switch the on is there off there you have a speed dial that's uh, labelled from one all the way around to six and here is your threader that just slots in and is kept there. On the side here you see we have a lip you can use this lip to clamp to the table or it's got a couple little screw holes in if you want to screw it down to the table or a board. Then we have power socket light that flashes when you've got power, a link cable connector that lets you connect it to the optional electric eel wheel yarn counter and a socket for the foot switch. Uh, now we know what all the bits do, let's get going with using it. Now to set the comb winder up the first thing you need is a correct amount of space. Now it comes with this placement diagram so uh, you'll need either a board of wood that you can attach these things to or a table that you can clamp them to or something that allows you to put the winder here and the tension unit there or further. So this table is perfect for me. I can uh, clamp the tension unit further on the end so I have a little bit longer distance and very important the centre of the tensioner lines up with the centre of the cone. If you don't get those two pieces lined up then you're going to uh, have uneven winding. Now there are two options for attaching the uh, tensioner and the winder. The first is to use screws onto a board and you can screw into these two holes here and the hole either side on the, comb wire, uh, the tension unit there and there. If you don't want to fix them permanently to a board or to a table then you can also clamp them. The tension unit comes with its own clamp. For the comb winder you will have to buy a clamp yourself. So I've got an assortment, there's an enormous one and uh, quick release one here and a different type of uh, quick release here. So the small one will be plenty. There's, it, it's quite heavy, it stays in place fairly well. So this is just to stop it slipping around. So I'm going to get uh, it clamped to the desk and return. Now before we get winding I'm just going to go over the controls with you. You can see I've got my foot switched plugged in here and when I plug in the mains that little light flashes three times to let me know it's got power. To uh, 
turn it on and off I have a few options first thing I want to do before I use it every time is make sure the speed dial is set to zero I don't want to be uh, turning on at a maximum speed unexpectedly now this is on but it's not going to go anywhere because I have zero speed so all I need to do is turn it up and it will start moving now to stop it I can press that button and leaving the speed dial set where it is I can turn it on again and you can see each time that happened uh, it didn't start immediately it had a, a, a second or so of ramp up so uh, it's not jerky it's unlikely to break your yarn doing this but if you have a very fine yarn or it's not fully tensioned you'll probably want to more gradually turn it up with this control now another option is this foot pedal I can turn it off turn it back on so it's all very self-explanatory speed dial foot pedal or switch now we're ready to start winding I'm going to simply be rewinding this cone of hand spun that I wound when I was practicing you can obviously start with something that isn't a cone you can start with a center pull ball you can start with a hand wound ball or you can even start with a skein on a swift as long as your yarn source moves fairly smoothly a swift is likely to be a little bit jerky so you probably want to do that on a lower speed at least to start with so for this cone I will just find the end and I'll put this cone on the floor to the left down here past the uh, tension unit and I'll bring the yarn up here and thread it through the tension unit now how you thread the tension unit depends on how much tension you need on your yarn so you probably start off with uh, quite a low amount of tension and then increase it uh, to do that you go through that guide straight through there and through that guide now that is the absolute bare minimum and uh, that's not going to give you much tension uh, so you probably want to maybe go around one of the pegs and that just gives you a little bit more if you want to maybe go around an extra peg here then that gives you even more and um, you'll just play around uh, zigzagging between the pegs until you get the amount of tension you need so that that's even more basically the more the thread has to change direction the higher the tension is going to be so uh, to start off with I'll probably do something fairly low and just go around one of those through here and then uh, out the uh, end guide and bring it over to the comb winder and this is quite a good point to check that this is lined up with the center of the winder if you hold your yarn in a straight line make sure it goes to the center if it doesn't you'll want to adjust one or the other of the pieces uh, otherwise you'll get uneven winding now we need to uh, Get it wound on the cone which i will give you a close-up for to thread the winder the first thing i will need to do is install the cone i've already got a, a cone in place here so i will just lift the arm up and put the key in there to hold the arm in place now to thread i pull out my threader put it under the drum comes out the other side of the drum here and I can thread my yarn through it. The yarn is now up and around the drum so I can put the thread all away and take the end of the yarn and put it over the cone and just turn it a couple of times until it's held in place. The cone is really nice and grippy so this will be sufficient and now I've got it started I can again take the key out put it in place and put that back down ready to start winding okay now I'm all set up and ready to go and uh, so I've just turned my speed down to zero and I press the on button nothing happens because I have no volume so I'll, uh, no volume no speed so I'll just gently turn it up 
And I'm about half speed here. What I'll be wanting to do is uh, have a look down the side and check my cone is unspooling nicely. It is, so uh, because I'm confident that I'm uh, getting a really nice even feeding of the yarn, I can now turn the speed up. And there you go, that's uh, winding at maximum speed. Now this isn't especially interesting for you to watch, um, so uh, I will probably cut this short very soon. So I've now finished winding and to take the cone off, it's exactly what I just did before in reverse. Just pop that out of the magnet and slide it off. And there you can see this cone is really nicely and neatly wound. Now I'm going to show you one more option that you can do with this, and that's using it alongside the yarn counter. Now for me, being able to use this alongside the yarn counter is great. So not only will it let me count my yarn so I can measure it, I can also attach the counter through... Uh, this connector here to the port on the winder and that will let me control the winder and turn it off when I reach a certain length which is what I've done here I have this cone of wool uh, cotton I'm going to be weaving with and I've wound off 500 meters of it onto this one I'm going to wind another 500 meters onto a separate cone and that means when I come to warp I'll be able to warp three ends wind three ends at the same time and uh, cut the time I spend standing up winding the warp considerably so I'm all set up to uh, wind cone using the yarn counter. When you do this, you don't need to use the additional tension unit. The uh, yarn counter itself functions perfectly as a tensioner. So I have it clamped to the edge of the desk with its own clamp. And uh, I have this yarn guide that it comes out lined up level with the center of the cone winder, exactly like before. I have uh, this set up so that it will beep when it reaches uh, the target length, which in this case, I didn't think you wanted to watch me wind a whole skein of 500 meters. So I've got it set up to uh, beep and stop when it gets to 20. I've got this cable here that is plugged into my comb winder. Just plug that in there to the yarn counter. And now when the yarn counter beeps, the comb winder will stop. So uh, everything else is exactly the same as before. So you can see it's winding on and it's feeding from the cone here on the floor. All right, it's a little bit slow, so I'll turn it up. 12, 15, 17. There we go. That's uh, measured off 20 metres and beeped and stopped. So uh, if I want to measure off many equal length cones, I can easily do that. Or I can just use it without connecting it up to measure the length of the yarn that I'm winding. I just have one small troubleshooting thing to go over with you. Uh, if you are finding that while you're winding, this is uh, cone is slipping and it's not winding properly then you have these two elastic bands that are included and if you just put one over there and over the arm and do the same on the other side that increases the pressure that this uh, cone is pushed on to the winding drum and will get rid of any slippage i've not had a problem with it so uh, i'm sure you won't either but uh, just in case that's what these elastic bands are for Finally, I'm just going to talk to you quickly about the cones and the sort of thickness of yarn that this can work with. So, uh, as you've seen, we have this very fine cotton for weaving. I have this. It's a heavy lace weight, I would say, um, hand spun. I have my current project over here, which is a, about a DK weight hand spun. And uh, finally, just to see if it would cope, I did this uh, crazy art yarn on it. And while the cone isn't wound especially neatly, it does manage surprisingly well with such a thick and uh, uneven yarn. 
Now, this cone, when I wound it, it was, let's see, it was 352 meters and 280 grams. So uh, it can hold a substantial amount as well. You can see here, I've got my label, a little hole here at the top that lets you uh, tie a label on and then uh, just stick that down the hole, which is great because then it means I always know what's on my cones. Now, I have an empty cone. You can see that little hole there for the label better. And I'm not sure if the camera lets you see, but it's got a bumpy ridged surface that really lets the yarn grip. And it's got lots of holes for air or for water flow because these cones are um, suitable for wet finishing cotton. If you have cotton hand spun, you can wind them onto these cones and you can put them in a pan and you can boil them and the cones will withstand being in boiling water. So uh, that's a great extra feature for them. And uh, I think that's all I've got to tell you. If you have any questions, please do let me know in the comments and I will do my best to answer them for you. Thank you.